Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 90. <laughs> up the number of floss tube I'm on and uh, most days I forget. <laughs> Apologies, I have um, a cold that I caught from my nephew Ben earlier in the week. Um, not COVID, I keep testing negative, but it sure feels like it. It's just a real gross cough and sore throat, but I'm on the upswing, I'm getting better. I just might sound a little crazy and need to take some cough breaks. But hi, hello, I'm back. <laughs> Um, it's been two weeks since my last video. My name is Liz and I'm going to talk to you about all things cross stitch today. I went to a retreat in um, Kansas City, Missouri last weekend. Have a lot of fun stuff and haul and gifts and things to show you from that. Um, I've also just got my whips and my like quilt projects that I've been working on. And yeah, it's a lot. So do you think? Is there anything else important going? Oh, there is one thing. Okay. Or should I even mention it? And well, it's fine. Okay. So, um, you guys might know if you've been watching me for a while that I have lost, um, two of my sweet cats, um, over the last year. Uh, first my birdie last summer and, um, then Ginger a few months ago. And maybe, well, it's probably been six months at this point. And, um, after birdie died, we got Jonesy. Uh, our little 11 month old, okay, our 11 month old kitten who I just tried to show off on camera and he assaulted me. So if I have any usable footage, here's a clip of that. I just want to show you off. Hey, calm down. Oh, I haven't shown you guys Jonesy in a while, but he's... Oh my gosh, Jonesy. Okay. Yeah. So he's 11 months old. He's a ridiculous terror. He's adorable, but um, he would not sit still, obviously, as you saw me struggle. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Jonesy is really Diego and Rob's cat. If you met me at Quilter Station um, retreat last weekend and we talked about Jonesy, then you already know this information. Um, Jonesy is part of the boy crew. He follows Rob into whatever room he's in. He spoons with Diego um, for every nap. You know, he lays on top of Rob in the bed or on the couch. He does not care about me at all. And and we were just going to stick to being a two cat household. Um, but anyways, we're going to get another cat. <laughs> and we actually just got approved for a sweet little orange lady. Um, and so my adoption appointment is on Monday. It's like through a foster system Austin has. Um, anyway, so I met the cat virtually. <laughs> They're doing virtual meetings. Anyways, I met the cat. She's the cutest, sweetest, and she just laid in the woman's lap for like 15 minutes while we uh, FaceTimed and just begged for pets. And I was like, oh, that's all I want. It's just a kitten who wants to beg me for pets all day. Uh, anyways, so um, I think we should be getting her on Monday afternoon. So anyways, um, of course, I'll show her off um, in my next video. But if you want uh, quicker updates, be watching my Instagram this week because, you know, I'm gonna have to take a million pictures of a new kitten. <laughs> so anyways, hopefully that happens on Monday. Uh, what else? What else? Thank you all for all the nice comments on the last video. I love having my mom and my sisters on whenever they will come on. I just love seeing what they're working on and I'm so glad that they're willing to come on and share it with you guys. So thanks mom, thanks Sarah. <laughs> okay, so I think for this video, I'm gonna do my normal um, segments. I don't have any finishes or FFOs, but I've got some whips and then um, some quilt projects and then 
I'll do like the whole back half of the, the video will be about Coulter Station and Hall and stuff. Um, yeah. And I do have a couple whips that were starts at the retreat that I'll just say for the retreat recap because I mean, I got like little starts. Uh, <laughs> so let me just go ahead and start with my whips. And so I told you guys last week that I very spur of the moment decided to set myself a sampler September goal of finishing Christmas Garden in September. And I think I'm going to hit the goal. Um, I am running out of a little bit of steam. I'm not... I, I'm not disliking stitching on it. I love stitching on it. I am just like itching to work on other projects. I just went to retreat. I have all kinds of new stuff. I have new kitted up stuff. And so it's like, you know, the struggle is real to not start something new. But I am making a lot of progress on Christmas Garden and I am like super determined to get it done this month. And I think I will. So let me show you. First up, um, Christmas Garden can be found in the Home for the Holidays book um, by Blackbird Designs. And here is where I'm at. Yeah. Um, I'm stitching mine on 36 count Picture This Plus Legacy. Uh, one strand over two threads. And I'm using the called for green and brown, but I changed my gold and my red. And I have made a lot of progress. So I think when I showed it to you, last I just kind of had this section done and so now I've almost finished this whole kind of second section and um, part of the bottom word so you know I'm getting there I really feel like maybe by next weekend this should be done I mean maybe even sooner if I buckle down I mean I've been stitching it a lot this past week honestly a ton um, but yeah I have some other quilting projects I want to work on that might take up my time this week because even though this is the only thing I'm like cross stitching on, I can work on other like quilt projects. <laughs> That's my loophole. Um, anyways, so this is Christmas Garden and I think it's about 80% done. I'm so excited. Okay, and then these next two projects are things that I brought on retreat with me um, because I gave myself four days off from my sampler September goal and just brought a few projects to retreat and um, worked on all of them. So the first thing is this, and I don't, I'll have to put a picture of the chart up. I just brought my working copy with me, so I don't have the chart handy, but it's a Summer House Stitchworks American Harmony number three, I think. And um, it's just going to be a little mattress pin cushion. And I finished the top and I'm halfway through stitching the band. And so I just worked on this just a little bit. This has been my travel project forever. I need to just finish it. But yep, I'm stitching this on 36 count Picture This Plus Legacy and um, called Four Colors. Yeah. So there's that one. And then the other project, let me grab the chart that I had to bring with me was my Teresa Kogut land that I love. So I was telling you guys how excited I was to go on this retreat because Teresa Kogut was going to be there. And I totally had like a fangirl moment when I saw her and she was like, yes, hello, hi. No, then we talked later. She was so nice, <laughs> like super great. Um, but I think I might have scared her for like a brief moment with my over enthusiastic greeting. <laughs> Oh, the more I laugh, the more I have to cough. Um, anyways, so I had to bring land that I love and work on it in the presence of Teresa. Uh, <laughs> and so I made a little bit of progress on this. And here is where land that I love is at. Um, I think I just worked on this big flower basket up top. Oh, and I left my thread hanging. So, you know, stopped in the middle of a stitch, of course. Um, I'm one of those weirdos who really does like to stitch at retreat. So if I'm not up like looking at the trunk shows or saying hi to a few people, like you can find me like in my chair stitching because I'm like nothing to do all day but stitch. Yes, I'm going to stitch as much as possible. So <laughs> um, I actually did stitch quite a bit at this retreat. Um, let's see, I'm stitching this on 36 count, one thread over two. Um, all the called for flosses, and then I hand dyed this piece of linen myself. 
Okay, the other project I brought um, was actually a hand sewing project. I brought my um, Christmas EPP hexies. I can't remember if I showed you guys that I made these, but I made these, well, I guess maybe I made them in the last two weeks since I saw you right before I went to Quilters. Um, but I took a mini charm pack of um, Jolly Darlings, the new Ruby Star Christmas line, and I made a stack of 45 hexies. And if you know, a mini charm pack comes with 42. So I just subbed in three scraps of fabric out of my stash that kind of matched. And so I am doing another project bag similar to the Halloween one I did, which actually is right here. So um, you might remember this Halloween bag from a few videos ago. And so I'm doing the same thing again, but just Christmas. So I've got, I brought all my little hexies. I got one column sewn together and started working on the second one. Um, I brought it in a project bag and I have all my little stacks of hexies organized so I know which row is which. And um, let's see, I brought these John James Signature Number 9 Sharps. Um, I wanted to try some new needles just because like with cross stitching needles, there's all kinds of different needles for EPP. These ones are not my favorite. Um, I definitely prefer the Sue Daly um, needles that I already have, but I'm glad to try them. And then I'm just using um, regular gray Aurifil. So yeah, I need to pick this project back up and get that Christmas project bag made. And I think I'll probably film um, whenever I put this bag together, because a lot of people have asked me how I do that and I mean it's real simple and I kind of just followed my vinyl bag tutorial but just well okay I gave you pictures last time right yeah so I showed you but like I might just make a little you know um a little video for it too so that is my EPP that I brought with me to the retreat um okay what else have I been doing quilting. So I um, I made one project bag that I actually brought as a gift. So I don't have it with me to show you, but I have some pictures. So I'll put them up on the screen. Um, this was a bag that I made for Pam of Just Keep Stitching. And um, I think I made this just a few days before we left. And so the other bags that you saw in the last video, those were all given as gifts as well. So um, I need to make myself some more bags because I gave them all away. Uh, <laughs> but Pam's bag, I used the mini charm pack style and just my um, basic all fabric project bag tutorial to put it together. So if you have a mini charm pack and um, some of that gridded fusible, follow Bumble Stitches tutorial on how to use um, fusible to make your patchwork and then watch my project bag tutorial and you can make this bag. <laughs> Okay, another thing I got done this week was making the backing for my Santa wall hanging. As a reminder, this is what the wall hanging looks like. Um, it's made with that Urban Chicks panel and the gridded fusible. And then I made the backing um, out of leftover layer cake squares and just some random Christmas fabric I had in my stash. And um, I'll show you this picture that I took to send to Keystone Sisters Quilting, who was going to do the quilting on the long arm quilting on this quilt. And um, I was like, is this enough overhang? Because typically long arm quilters ask for four inches on each side, top and bottom. And as you can see from the photo, I got four inches on the top and bottom, but I didn't quite have four inches on the sides. So um, my bad. I'm probably a long arm quilter's worst nightmare because I'm used to doing them myself. <laughs> so I'm like, make it work, please. Anyway, she very nicely was like, I think I can make it work. And I was like, okay, thank you. I cannot wait to get that one back though and hang it up for Christmas decorating this season. Um, and speaking of decorating, I think sometime this week, I'm going to go through and hang up all of the Halloween stuff. I've now got two Halloween quilt wall hangings to hang up. The one I did last year, the kitty corn, and then the Boo Crew one that I just did. And I've got a lot of new Halloween cross stitch finishes that I actually need to finish, um, like FFO. So I might need to do like an FFO weekend coming up here. But anyways, I think I'm gonna start putting out all of the Halloween decor because Rob's already watching like all the scary movies. It's football season, you know, it may be 90 degrees, but you know, it's fall. <laughs> Okay, and then I worked on my 
Letters to Santa, Moda Quilt Along. And this is the one where I am doing um, Christmas movies as a quilt. And so I'll put up the inspiration image here. This was created by Moda Michelle and mocked up. And I decided to take her inspiration and rearrange it and add in some more of my favorite Christmas movies. And so um, I made another row. Well, I made the words for a row. I haven't made the filler blocks and put it together yet. But let me show you what I made. So I made love. And this one's long, actually. <laughs> so, so cute. Um, also, I'm obsessed. This is like one of my favorite prints in the quilt, which are these little um, candy cane, um, candy canes on the pink. And then the last word in the row is upside down. Elf. <laughs> And I had to do elf in green. So cute. So um, that's the third row. Uh, I think I have a picture of the first two rows that you've seen before that I'll pop in. But um, this quilt is 13 rows. Um, it's a real, real big in like 90 by 100 ish, um, like estimated size so far. And to be honest, I'm like running out of steam on making these letters. I'm not abandoning the quilt. I'm not. But I like did not have the motivation. Like I had to force myself to finish all the words in this row. And then I couldn't even force myself to do the filler blocks. I was like, I'm done for now. I'm putting it away. Um, so I need to like have a real sort through of my quilt whips and decide which ones I'm motivated to finish now and which ones I'm going to put away for a little bit. Um, because I have several Christmas quilt whips and quilt kits and I kind of need to make a decision soon on what's actually going to get done for this Christmas and what's not. And I feel like if I push on the movie quilt, um, that's like going to be the only thing I get done this fall. Whereas, I don't know. I don't know. This is like just thinking out loud. So I'm trying to like make some decisions about quilts because as you'll see in a second, I got stuff to make another quilt. Um, <laughs> I have so many projects around me right now. The quilter station retreat was amazing. Uh, I guess let's just move on to quilter station. That's all I've been sewing. Project bags, some quilt stuff. Those are all my whips, my EPP. Yeah. Let's move on to retreat. Okay. <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay. So this is my giant tote bag that we got from Quilter Station. Um, cross stitch extravaganza. Uh, if you're interested in this retreat, they do it in April and September. So far, those have been the two times. Um, they just announced the designers for April 2023. I'm sure I have a flyer in here somewhere, but I think it's like la di da Beth Twist, maybe? Oh, I can't remember. Anyways, um, so... Definitely call Quilter Station if you're interested in signing up for any of the retreats. They're fabulous. I'm going to go through this big giant bag and I'm honestly probably not going to go in order. I'm probably just going to start pulling things out of here and showing them to you because I've got projects from designers and gifts and haul. Um, also got another pile of haul right here. Another pile of haul. <laughs> right here. So, um, if you want like a proper retreat recap, uh, Pam and Steph posted something earlier in the week and Annie proper sister. I haven't finished watching her video yet. I just started it, but she has one too. So, um, mine's going to be <laughs> just pulling stuff out of a bag nonsense. Um, but I'm going to show you all the stuff. I'm going to show you. Okay. Let me see how I'm going to set this up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that works. <laughs> Um, first thing is my little notions pouch that I made last year to take with me and I brought it again. It's perfect for sitting up on the table. Um, and here I just have all kinds of fun little goodies that people were passing out like, um, needle bling, no floss bling and, um, needle minders. Look how cute that is. Uh, what do you call these floss cards? Why am I forgetting everything? Um, so anyways, there's just... Oh my gosh, this little thing. Somebody, um, Abby, homemade by Abby. She came around and had this board of adorable handmade clay needle minders. And I got this little mushroom. Um, 
and then just more uh, floss bling, floss rings. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, that's upside down. But you get the idea. There's just, like, they're all just so cute. A um, policewoman, which, Laura, were these yours? Yes, Laura Hines. Oh my gosh. Um, I had dinner with Laura one night, and her stories about her mother, Laura, you know we're all obsessed with your mom. <laughs> um, anyways, I love your uh, floss cards. Oh my gosh, I got some Pam and Steph ones, so... Look at their cutie little kid photos. There's Steph. And there's Pam. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Um, Kathy. I can't remember your last name, but Kathy made these little Oort containers. These little, like, twist up um, trash cans for your, for your table. And I'm obsessed with it. And I need one because I never have one. And Steph makes fun of me for leaving a pile of threads at my table. So thank you, Kathy, for that. Um, oh my gosh, he's adorable. It's like a Holly Hobby little floss tags. Um, and then just like tons of little like floss ring stuff. Okay, so all kinds of little goodies and things like that. Thank you everyone who came up and said hello or let me like accost you at your table with a needle minder. Um, I had such a good time meeting everybody. Um, I, I, I'm always just surprised, I guess, at how many people know who I am. But I mean, I was in a place full of cross stitchers, so I guess it makes sense. But um, thank you to every lovely person who came to say hi or how much you liked my tutorials. That was like the best compliment ever. Um, I love making those tutorials. And... I need to make more, but I don't have like the best setup. I always say that. I don't have the best setup to do it, which is why I don't just like always do tutorials. <laughs> but I'm so glad the ones I put up are appreciated and used. And thank you everyone for being so lovely and so kind. Um, see if I can find some of the other gifty things before I get into all the projects. Um, Liz Matthews um, brought me a little sweet little gift and I just brought um, part of it, which was this charm pack of cheer and merriment, which is so cute. So um, that's going to get probably turned into a project bag. Thank you, Liz. Oh, I got, who is this from? Nora and Jean. Nora and Jean gave me this adorable, um, like floss keep, like kind of like you put your like loose floss and your scissors and your um, working floss and all that stuff on this. And then you like fold it, let's see, fold it like that, fold it like that, and then there's like a little piece of elastic, and it folds up into this cute little cone. So thank you ladies so much for this. Um, oh my gosh, this pin cushion. Um, oh wait, hold on, I have to look at my list. I like made a list of people's names who like didn't have a card on it, so I'm gonna pull that up while we while we chat. Lisa Erickson. Um, she gifted me this beautiful handmade Tula Pink um, pin cushion with a sewing machine on top. How cute is that? And it's like hefty. It's like the size of a softball. And it has two adorable little pins in the top. And it came from Dolls and Their Girls, which I think is an Etsy shop. Um, but Lisa, thank you. Oh my gosh. Okay. I forgot. Uh, I put this in here too. Liz also, Liz Matthews also gifted me this, which are these little covers for a spool of Aurifil for the top and the bottom. And so the idea is that like you have your, your spool, why can't I think of the word? Spool of Aurifil. You put your needles inside the tube and you close it at the top and the bottom. And this like makes your spool of thread like a needle case. So if like you're traveling, like I was with EPP, this would be like perfect to put your needles in. Um, so I just wanted to share that nifty little tool. She found it on Laundry Basket Quilts um, website. So thank you, Liz. Okay, Jenny made me this amazing um, needle book out of Blackbird Designs fabric with some lace like embellished. It's so cute. And so it just uses a tie. Oh, it's untied already. And then it's like wonderful, this big book with like lots of pretty wool felt in the center to stash all your pins and needles and it's just like embellished oh it's got pockets I didn't even notice that oh my gosh you could stash like little scissors in here oh and then on the front it's got on the front page it's got this beautiful little heart to like tuck a needle or something like your working needle um 
this is just beautiful and she made it and I love it thank you Jenny oh and then I got to meet Olivia B um here on floss tube Olivia B she was at the retreat and she made me a project bag and um she told me she loves my tutorial yay I'm so glad <laughs> And she made me one with that Christmas in the City fabric that I showed you guys a while back that is so beautiful. I love it. It's like very me, just very bright, red and pink. Um, and she used pom-poms and it's lined. I don't even, see. oh, the Christmas trees. I forgot to even check the lining. Oh my gosh, so cute. So I can't wait to put a Christmas project in this right away. Thank you, Olivia, so much. And it was so nice to meet you and your friends. <laughs> Okay, this next thing is so amazing. It's like a scissor holder, but like so fancily decorated for Halloween. And this like really cool vintage paper. Um, this was made by Kathy. I had to fight one of her friends for it. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but she did threaten to steal it. Uh, she has a little witch sitting on top. She like made all of this. And so there's a hole in the center um, right here. Oops, let me not chop off her little hand sorry these are like my applique scissors not my embroidery scissors so it does sink in there more nicely but um it just holds your scissors it's like the cutest little thing and I'm just gonna set it up on my entry table um as a Halloween decoration Ooh, or in my little cubby because yeah this is perfect so Kathy thank you for letting me have your beautiful um handmade scissor holder and I'm so impressed that I made it home without breaking it I like carefully wrapped it um and it made it <laughs> Okay, there might be some other gifts in this pile, but I think I'm just going to start pulling out the projects and talk to you about um, the projects that we had. Um, we had five designers who came to this retreat and it was set up classroom style. So we're all at tables facing the front and the teacher would give like a presentation. And so we had um, Linda from Chessie and Me, and then we had Kathy Barrick, Liz Matthews, um... Blackbird, Alma, and Teresa Kogut. So those were our five designers. Oh, and then we had a surprise special guest who was Lois from Lady.Creates. She is hilarious. Um, her and Rita, who runs the Quilter Station store, like it's her store and the retreat, um, they have like such, they're like a two woman like comedy duo team. They're really funny together. So it was really fun to meet her and she gave us an awesome project that we were not expecting. So I'm gonna start just going through all the projects. And um, first on the top of my pile is Teresa Kogut, who actually went last, but that's okay. I have it on top, so it's getting talked about. Um, this is the beautiful box that her project came in. So cute. And let's see. This one is like the most intact because I didn't start it. <laughs> so everything's in here. Okay, so inside her beautiful package was this project, and I think she pronounced it Perniche Manor, even though in my head I would just say Pernice, but anyways, um, that's not right. <laughs> so it's this beautiful sampler that she designed for the retreat. Um, so it's exclusive to the retreat right now, but I'm sure it'll be a future release. And inside here, it's kitted up with all of the floss. And then she gave us the fabric for it, which is a 40 count vintage country mocha which love. And then she gave us a little extra chart that is a little small to kind of remember um, our retreat. So it says cross stitch Exa extravaganza 2022 on it. And so cute. If I'd had extra fabric for this, I would have started this right there at the retreat, but I didn't bring any extra fabric or anything with me. So it stayed in the box. Um, oh, she also gave us a beautiful um, label to put on the back of our finished Perniche Manor um, project. So, and it was wrapped in this like super cute wrapping paper and stuff. Her project was just beautiful. Okay, next up, I know this is Kathy Barrick's box. So, um, let's see. The way some of the designers did the um, retreat was to have like kind of an in class project and a take home project. And so, Kathy Barrick gave us supplies to make this wool felt project that were like these little wool felt gloves that she's found at like flea markets and made herself. And so she gave us a box of like craft supplies basically that was amazing. Um, so there's just like craft scissors and uh, needles, like a regular needle and a beading needle and um, oh, I can't remember what this is, oh, like a needlework label I think. 
Um, it's also a needlework label. And wool felt and needlepoint silk to sew the felt together and like an exacto knife. Like she really gave us all the supplies to do this project in class. Um, so it's beautiful. So that's the crafty box. And I know I have the picture of the, the project somewhere in here. So let me find it. Oh yeah, this was the label on her, um, her whole project. I give you my hand. And so, um, let's see. This was kind of, oh yeah, this has both projects. So this has the cross stitch she designed as well as the felt hands like that you can see embellished. And so she gave us the option or showed us the, you know, the option of stitching the chart on light or dark fabric. So she didn't actually provide any cross stitch linen. Otherwise I totally would have started because she gave us all the beautiful needlepoint silks. Um, but again, I didn't bring any extra linen with me. So, um, and then here is like the templates for cutting out the wool felt to do the hand project. Um, scrapbook paper for, I think doing paper hands. There was like paper or wool options. Um, and then the cross stitch project. So, okay, we put all this back together. Otherwise I'm gonna forget <laughs> where it all goes. Okay, Liz Matthews. Liz Matthews. Um, she had a small project that we could do in class, which I did and I completed mine. I'm very excited about it. Uh, and she had her big project. So her big project is the vanity sampler. And this is a sampler she found at an antique mall or an antique store. And it had the name and birth date cut out of it. And women would do that to hide their actual age. So they call it a vanity sampler. And so she taught us all about vanity samplers and um, kind of why women would do this. <laughs> and so um, as like kind of a small class project, she took a lot of the mo motifs out of this sampler and charted them into um, little pillow designs. And so I actually stitched mine and I just need to FFO it. And she gave us all the supplies. So let me show you. Um, so this is her Vanity Sampler Pillows project. And so she shows the, all the examples stitched up. And so the one that I did is this one, the little house. So cute. <laughs> and I actually managed to stitch it like within the three hours of her class. So um, I was pretty proud. I mean, it's not that big, but you know, I was chit chatty. <laughs> And then she gave us all of the thread for the project. Um, she gave us some beautiful uh, note cards. And then um, she gave us the finishing fabrics to make the little pillow. And she actually already sewed the pillow together. And the technique she shows is doing like a slash in the back and turning it inside out. Um, I'll probably do my favorite method, which is just to unpick a side and turn it inside out, but we'll see. But then, so like you're able to finish it patch style, kind of like how she shows on the chart. So I have all of this ready to FFO. She even gave us fiber fill to like stuff the pillow, um, which I'm sure is around here somewhere. If I could just show you the top of this desk. Maybe I'll take a picture of it with um, my phone. Now that I film on a camera, I can take stuff, like I can take pictures with my phone while I'm filming because you might, you guys might want to see this table. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, here it is. A bag of fiber fill to stuff my tiny pillow. Perfect. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff in this bag. I did find another gift. I can't remember who somebody handed this to me and said their friend made it and I don't remember who now but it's like one of those little keychains it's like a little wrist strap and it's made out of blackbirds new line of fabrics and I love it and I'm gonna totally put it on my keys so thank you for that um what else what else <laughs> Oh, Coaster, Allison Norris, who I'm sure a lot of you know from commenting on YouTube and on Instagram. She is, um, she's awesome. I'm so glad I finally got to meet her in person because we've chit chatted on Instagram forever. So um, she used my little coaster tutorial and made up a ton of coasters to bring to the retreat. And so one morning I got to my seat and I was like, oh my gosh, somebody made me a coaster like the ones I made. And she's like, oh yeah, that was me. <laughs> so thank you, Allie. Um, okay. Um, lady.creates, um, Lois, she 
showed up as a last minute surprise. Well, I'm sure it wasn't last minute for her, but like we didn't know about it until last minute. And she brought us this beautiful velvet pumpkin project. And so of course it's her hand dyed velveteen um, and the trims. There are pins. There is an actual pumpkin stem, like dried pumpkin stem in there, which she hilariously said you can just like find on eBay or Etsy, but shop for them in the spring, not the fall, because it'll be like half the cost. <laughs> um, so all the wonderful instructions and she kind of like talked through all the instructions with us and yeah, we got this wonderful, awesome velvet pumpkin, which I need to make ASAP so I can get it set out with all my Halloween stuff. Okay, I think this bag is chessy in me. <laughs> So yes, okay. Um, this is one of the projects that I started in class. So she was the first day. It started on Thursday afternoon at like 2.30 or 3. And so I was just in love with this project. Um, we got to see it in person, of course. She had the model passed around. And um, I was like, yeah, I want this. I'm starting it immediately. <laughs> um, so she gave us a thread card with all of the floss that we need and a couple extra skeins of polywog because it's used for cording in the project. Um, let me see if I can find the actual front of the chart. Um, yes, here it is. So it's called the Harvest Huswife. And so it's like a little roll up and then a scissor fob. It's just really beautiful. Um, so I started mine and um, do I have a picture? So basically there's like the outside and then on the inside there's spots um, like decorative stitched pieces. And so I actually started on one of the inside pieces, which is just this little um, berry basket that goes on the inside. And so this fabric, um, like on her actual chart, there's like a diagram of how to stitch it on this piece of fabric so that it all comes out perfectly because it's like the exact right amount of fabric. And so I just started up in the upper right corner where I always start and that happened to be that little part of the motif. So that's pretty much what I stitched on Thursday and Friday in the actual retreat. Oh yeah, this has a picture of the inside of the Huswife. So I'm stitching that little bottom piece right there. Hopefully you can see it. It's like a real photograph, so it's kind of glossy. Oh my gosh, Lenny. I don't even know if I looked at this. Um, Lenny, who is one of the Sable Stitchers. Um, oh gosh, what is your your co-host name. I met both of them. Um, I'd met Lenny before last year, uh, but I think they, well, I know they did, but I think they'll include it, but they filmed me for their floss tube channel. They kind of did a, like we're going around and like um, seeing what people were stitching on. So I need to go look and see if they've posted that. But um, I didn't even look at the gift she dropped off, which is so cute. This is a little notebook it says to do, be happy. And oh my gosh, did you actually make this? <gasps> Lenny, it says handmade by Lenny. So amazing. Um, and then there's lovely little candies in there. So thank you, Lenny. Like <laughs> sometimes I would just come back to my seat from walking around and there would just be like gifts sitting on the table, which is like the best thing in the world. But um, <laughs> some of them, you know, like we'd start something like a teacher would start talking and I'd like just kind of shove stuff in my bag to look at later. And then clearly I forgot to come back and look at this later. So <laughs> it's a whole new world opening up this bag and seeing what's in it. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see what else is in here. Oh, I forgot I had this stitching Scotty. Dottie was there at the retreat. I got to meet her and talk with her. Thanks, Dottie. Um, let's see what else is in here. I know I, I'm missing one more project. I think it's somewhere on the table buried, but it's the Blackbird project. So I'm just digging through the rest of this bag to see what else is in here. Oh, cute. Project cards. Oh, these are from Jenny. I showed you her um, beautiful needle book that she made me earlier. So these are her floss cards that she gave me. Love. Like, I seriously never need to buy floss drops again. Everybody is so generous. Ah. Oh my gosh, Sandra. I don't think I saw this either. Um, okay, cute. Cute. She, had a, she gave me like a little bag of goodies since so there's this like beautiful wooden button, um, a needle threader, a little like fuzz fluffer, thread fluffer, or a, what do you call it? It's like when you have to unpick and you want to like get rid of the little leftover thread on your fabric. Um, and then she gave me this beautiful botanical sticker. How cute is that? Um, thanks, Sandra. It was so nice to meet you in person. <laughs> 
Okay, okay, what else is in here? Oh, oh, I bought, okay, this is kind of part of haul, but that's okay, it's in this bag. Um, all the designers had a trunk show, and so um, I did just a tiny bit of shopping. I feel like most of the stuff they brought was kind of like new releases, and I'd kind of had and bought <laughs> all the stuff. Um, oops, I've bought too many things. But I did find this amazing one from Chessie and Me um, called To Have a Friend. Um, and I just loved it. It's all three pieces are in this chart. And I think it's on Week's Dove, which I definitely have in my stash. So, got that one. Okay, yes, and the bottom of this bag is just like candy. Uh, <laughs> just making sure. Ooh, a fun pair of scissors. Somebody... One of the designers gave us these. Was these from Teresa? These might have been from Teresa Coget. They're like some Kelmscott scissors. They're really cute. Um, yeah, okay. And then I really wish I had written this down. Who gave me this beautiful needle book? I don't think I wrote this down. So I got two needle books. I got a Blackbird Designs and I got this one. And now I don't remember who gave me this one, but it's so beautiful. And it's a handmade wool applique needle book and I love it. Um, if this is you, please leave me a comment. I thought I had written down names of everyone, but clearly I fell down on my job. Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Oh my gosh, is that, there's even a Pat Carson's favorite needle tucked in there. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> Oh, I was like, what's in this bag? Okay, this bag was from Steph from Keepsakes. Um, so funny story. Like, I guess it was, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, um, like a week before I went to Quilter Station, I, um, I have like my credit card notifications on my phone. So like when I spend money or Rob spends money or whatever, like it just pops up. One of our names spent this much money, right? And so um, I was just sitting there uh, and my phone flashed and it said, like, my card, uh, $60 at Keepsakes declined. And I was like, what? Because I had ordered stuff through Keepsakes, through stuff. And, um, I guess, so I didn't, I forgot that I'd gotten a new card number. And so it declined the old card number, like, so embarrassing. And so I called the store, but they were already closed. And so Steph was like, don't worry about it. I just put it on my card and you could just give me cash at the retreat. So I did. I just felt so dumb about it. I was like, sorry. I swear I'm good for it. I just got a new card. Um, anyways, so she brought me some things I'd ordered, which were Blooming Tiny Town, which came out at Market, and all of the called for flosses. Let's see if I can grab them all. All of the beautiful flosses. And then, um, there is this series of Christmas elves. Um, I'm totally forgetting the pattern name and the designer. I think if I Google search it, I can find an image. Um, I bought one of these off of a D-Stash page. And then Pam, Steph's mom, was getting obsessed with stitching them. And so Steph was going to order her all the button packs from just another button company. Yeah. And so she's like, I know you have one. Do you want me to order, order you a button pack? So she did. And it is so cute. So it's got like, oh gosh, is that way too glary? It's got like the wreath and the kitty and a present and a star and a mouse. So I definitely, this is definitely something I want to stitch for Christmas this year. Um, it's called the Toy Maker Elf. I can't remember the pat, praiseworthy stitches? No. I don't know. I I'll put it on the screen. But anyways, um, so that was my order from Keepsakes that <laughs> embarrassingly um, I had to wait a little while to pay for because I did not give them my updated credit card info. Okay, let me find my Blackbird Designs project, and then I can show you all my Coulter Station haul. Yes. Um, I might need to repack this bag and get it off my... Well, let me take a picture first, because you guys... Okay, I'll do a video, and I'll insert it so you can see what I'm looking at here. Um, this... Hello! Is my table right now and my drawer. This is what I'm looking at. <sighs> Lord. And yes, that is my drill. Okay. 
great. <laughs> Let me clean off this table a little bit and find the blackbird. Okay, this is super embarrassing. I cannot find the cover chart um, to the Blackbird Designs project that Alma gave us. I know it's in here somewhere, but I cannot find it easily now and hopefully I'll find it by the end of the video. Um, I did start it. So um, it's a beautiful sampler. Um, so many people have shown photos of it. I cannot believe I can't find my chart. It was a large sampler and then a small project that could be made to mount on a box and she gave us the little box and the instructions and let's see it's called moments of glad grace i have my chart right here because i was working on it but what i did with the cover i don't know this is so embarrassing anyways um she gave us all the threads <laughs> and these beautiful floss drops so um just marked my color names on here and hung all my threads and um she gave us a piece of 36 count pictures plus legacy which as you'll know is the best or one of my favorites <laughs> this is a much darker piece than my other piece though but it's really pretty um and i got started on um the upper right corner of the sampler's border and worked on this for about a day and it is beautiful and it is a very similar berry um it's different leaves and stuff but it's a very similar berry to my christmas garden um sampler which i love so that was the blackbird project really cool that i can't find the chart i'm sure i will at some point so i'm not going to stress um not, not the chart i have the chart the picture uh, <laughs> she also gave us this beautiful little um blackbird designs notebook notepad and she also gave us um, an out of print chart, which is one I don't have. And oh my gosh, um, it's called With My Needle and it's Loose Feathers number two. And I think this is a pretty sought after one and I was delighted to get it as part of um, her class. So um, yeah, this will have to be a future summer start. It's really, really pretty. Um, okay, when I find the cover photo, I will show you. Oh, another um, small project out of the sampler project from Blackbird was to do a little pillow out of this toweling that um, Quilter Station had. So um, my friend Joanne, um, who was also at the retreat, she went to Quilters one day and got like a whole yard of this toweling and she let me um, take a little piece of it and it's like finished on both edges. Um, and um, I look into, I took pictures of how um, Alma finished hers. And so I'm definitely gonna do, and Alma stitched directly on the weave of this toweling. And so I think I'm gonna try it. Um, so yeah, so she did like a little motif from the sampler on this toweling and it was super cute. So, okay, I'm gonna get into my quilter station haul. Okay, I'll start with a cross stitch haul. Um, all I bought cross stitch wise was linen and a lot of it. So <laughs> I got um, a new to me fabric called Atomic Ranch. That's the dyer, Atomic Ranch Tombstone. So here is the cool tombstone. Um, I got Atomic Ranch Freeze and these are both 36 count. I got Forbidden Fiber Company, which I don't know if I've ever stitched on Forbidden Fiber Company. I've definitely heard of them. I just don't know if I've stitched on them. And this color is called Granite and it's a 40 count. It's a real pale neutral. And then I got just a plain Zweigert, so not an overdyed, um, 36 count dark cobblestone. I just really like that dark brown color, kind of brown gray. And I got r and &R Reproductions 40 Count Espresso. This is one of the r, &R colors I don't have in my stash and I really like r, &R fabrics. So that's Espresso. So that was my fabric haul, cross stitch fabric haul. And then I have some quilt fabric. I, <laughs> I took with me two quilts um, that I possibly wanted to kit up while I was at Quilter Station. Um, I actually, well, I guess I shopped twice, but the first day I shopped was Thursday morning before the retreat started. And of course that's when everyone was there. So it was really packed and I was chit-chatting with a lot of people and I just, 
I mean, they just have so much in that store that I just kind of was like, okay, I'm just going to focus on one quilt. And um, the quilt that I decided to kit up is from Red and White Quilts 2. Um, and the quilt is called, actually, I have it on my phone. Let's see. Okay, so it's called the Oh My Stars Quilt. Um, and I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. So this is the one I decided to kit up. I've never done just like a red and white quilt. And so that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I kitted up. So um, I got um, six yards of red solid, except I got this beautiful French general print. And then I got, I don't remember what um, designer this is. Oh, I think maybe this is a coriander seeds. Um, and then I got four or five yards of this for the white, which is the background. And it's just like a really pretty natural cream color with like a little print that you probably can't see in camera, but there's a little print to it. So this is going to become that red and white quilt. Cannot wait. That's another um, quilt kitted up and <laughs> ready to add to the stacks of other kitted up quilts. Um, and then I also got two yards of just some random fabrics. Um, I think this was a French General. Actually, okay, hold on. Let me look at the salvage. I think maybe this one wasn't French General. Which one is this? Oh yeah, this is not French General. This is Garden Gatherings by Primitive Gatherings. They had the, her, like this whole line, I think it must be new, like all set up on an end cap and I just thought this red was gorgeous. So yes, this is from Primitive Gatherings. And then this one is um, a yard of fabric from the La Rouge French General line, which I just thought was beautiful. So I got a yard of that. No plans, no idea, but maybe it'll go with something with this. <laughs> um, this is just like a blue and white quilt star print. Let's see, who is this fabric by? This one. Oh, this one is Starlight Gatherings by Primitive Gatherings. I don't think I've ever bought primitive gatherings fabric before but um seeing it in person I was like okay that's gorgeous so that is my quilt fabric haul from Quilter Station okay so now I just have some other normal haul that came in I think that was all of the retreat recap um I had an awesome time the projects were excellent the people were excellent um so much fun stitching in the lobby um most nights I think every night um Thank you to the Cincinnati girls for letting me hang out with you. Um, thank you to Laura and Roxy and Joanne and Lisa and just all the lovely people who I chit chatted with over and over throughout the weekend. Um, yeah, it was so much fun. Jen and Kim, y'all were great. <laughs> um, and then, oh, I got to meet the Keystone Sisters quilters, um, Jen and Amanda and their mom. And we all got to go out to dinner and they're lovely. We got to talk quilts like all night long. Um, yeah, so a lot of great people, a lot of fun. Um, I don't think I'm going to sign up for the one in April just because, well, wait, no, I know I'm not going to because I think it's actually like the weekend before the Stitch North retreat. So anyways, um, I won't be going in April, but I will be trying to go again in September because I love it. <laughs> okay, that was the retreat. Okay, so um, I got my, let's see, what month is this? It's my September 2022 Moda Fat Quarter Club and it is Buttercup and Slate by Fig Tree Fabrics. And just really pretty yellow, green, gray combinations. And that's cute. Um, I got some market pre-orders and I'm actually realizing I don't think I brought one of my so I got I ordered I pre-ordered from two different places and I just realized I didn't bring one of them in here so I'll show you what I got from farm girl dry goods and then I'll have to go get the my top knot order okay so um one of my pre-orders was Halloween tiny town so cute I had to you know I had to get this um I've stitched the Christmas one and I'm halfway through the Valentine's one. And then you just saw the blooming one. <laughs> I need to do them all. And I actually, I have a frame. I'm kind of wondering if I can, I don't know. I have an idea for maybe like an interchangeable finish. I like haven't fully finished any of them. So I have ideas. Um, so I got that chart and I had to get her new Wee Santa because he is adorable. Like I love the pink coat. So I got that guy. And then, um, Michelle, who 
Michelle Farm Girl. She um, runs Farm Girl Dry Goods and she kitted up this new release from Brenda Gervais called Joy and Good Cheer, which is beautiful. And so she offered it as a kit with the 36 count winter brew and all of the called for floss and um, this little waxer. And then um, there's actually finishing fabric. You can kind of see it here on the bot, but like there's finishing fabric to make it into a pillow. So it's like fully kitted and I'm obsessed. I think it's so pretty. So I got that. And then the only other thing I got from her that wasn't like a pre-order thing is this little like love notes. It's a Brenda Gervais chart, like her holiday series that she was doing. Um, Michelle had some of the felt hearts and the tinsel that she used in like a little display of love notes. And I have been wanting to stitch love notes. I have it all kitted up. Um, so I think this year's the year. So I got the little finishing supplies. I found the last of my haul. Sorry, can't show my address. <laughs> um, this is from Abby, Top Knot Stitcher. She has always like an excellent selection and website for pre-ordering because she'll put like everything that's been announced up there. Um, and then you just add to cart and wait for them to all be released. <laughs> so I got um, Satsuma Street has some new perforated paper kits and I got a new Halloween one and this one is called Fun Guy. <laughs> um, Rob loves these things. I've stitched one for him. I'm going to stitch this one for him this year. Well, hopefully we'll see if I get it done, but, um, <laughs> fun guy. Um, okay. I also got this one. What is this called? It's from Pantini Pantini and it's called Craft Supplies and Other Lies. <laughs> And it says, what does it say? I will not buy craft supplies this month and other lies I tell myself. I mean, if that's not accurate, I don't know what is. <laughs> and then, okay, this one was, I think, popular with everyone and I'm obsessed with it. And I've never, I don't think I've ever bought one of their charts before. It's um, October House Fiber Arts Strawberry Fair. And like, how cute is that? So had to have that one. And then the other one I got is from Kathy Barrick and it's called White Winter Moth. And this is one of her new Expo releases. And I've already pre, not pre-ordered, I've already ordered all the silks. I'm just waiting for those to come in. And maybe this will be a winter start. So pretty. Um, I can't remember, what is this fabric? Oh, Sand by Fiber on a Whim. I think I might actually have some of that in my stash. So very cute. So those were all my pre-orders um, from Market. I just got, you know, like seven or eight things. <laughs> Not too bad, right? Uh, <laughs> okay, and I think that's going to wrap up the video. Um, I have no idea how long that was. Maybe an hour, maybe two. I don't know. Um, you saw the state of my desk. I need to clean it up. <laughs> Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much. Oh, I forgot I was gonna say one more thing. Um, I am thinking about a new quilt along series. I want to do that. Um, the problem is I am like fully going back into the office. I have, you know, less time at home than I used to. So videos might have to be a little more planned and spread out than I would like. Um, I like to be able to do stuff like instantaneously, but you know, I gotta, I got to keep the job that pays for all this hobby. Um, so, <laughs> um, but I am thinking about a new quilt along and just as like a hint, I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do is the, um, trip around the world jelly roll quilt, um, scrappy trip around the world. Um, I'll put a link below to the instructions I'm going to follow. It's like a free technique, um, that's out online. So that's kind of what I look for in a quilt along is like something free and easily available to everyone. Cause you know, that way you don't have to buy a pattern or whatever. Um, and I can just talk about it freely and it's not like I'm stepping on anyone's toes cause it's not a pattern. Um, so look for that sometime soon that I bought um, two jelly rolls of Noel by Laundry Basket Quilts. That's what I'm going to use for mine. You need basically like a jelly roll of a solid and a jelly roll of a print. But what I'm going to do is separate my two jelly rolls into a jelly roll of all the light prints and a jelly roll of all the dark prints and just alternate them that way. And yeah, I think I'll kick that off hopefully sometime in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, of course, you don't have to use 
Christmas fabric. You can use whatever you want, but that's one of the Christmas quilts that I think I can easily get done over the next couple of months. So that's kind of shooting up to the top of my list. Um, Liz Matthews and I have been talking quilts so much lately and we might be doing like a Starstruck 2 um, quilt along at some point. That one is like you have to buy the pattern for that one. Um, and I probably wouldn't do like a video series on it. It'd just be me showing it off in my videos. But we both have that pattern and the fabric. And I think she was telling me, somebody was DMing her, Michael, I think it was you, about how you wanted to do that one too. Um, so there might be other people out there who want to join in with us. Um, what else, what else, what else? I feel like we haven't talked in two weeks. Uh, oh, the project folder that I made last week that I showed you guys or two weeks ago. Um, thank you for all the love on that. I do want to do a tutorial for that. Um, I actually gifted that to Liz Matthews at the retreat. Um, it was very well received. So I'm glad you liked it, Liz. And uh, yes, I definitely will do I'll add that to my to do list for making a tutorial because it's actually super, super simple. I mean, especially the way I did it because I just did a zipper half and a project um like a pattern holder um so of course you can like customize it to do whatever but I think I'll just show you like the very basic kind of like how I did my other project bag tutorials and then you have fun customizing um <laughs> okay I think I'm gonna cut myself off and go edit this video so thank you guys so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one